Hello everybody, welcome back to the Junkyard News. I'm your host, the Junkyard Dog, and today we're going to be talking about a case that just got a woman awarded a settlement of $3 million. And some might say, cops would never do something like that. Well, believe me, they would, and they did. So let's dive into it. ...of illegally abandoning an arrested Butte County woman at a local landfill. Officer Robert Sasick admitted to a city of Orville investigator that he abandoned 52-year-old Dana James in a local landfill. The landfill is known as Neal Road Waste Facility off Highway 99 and is over 15 miles south of Orville on an undeveloped stretch of road. James was arrested for trespassing in Chico last September and was taken to Butte County Jail after displaying erratic behavior behavior and according to the lawsuit police suspected she may have been under the influence of a controlled sus substance allegedly she was released and arrested again that same night and dropped off at Orville Hospital she was then allegedly released from the hospital back into police custody where officers Robert Sasick Sergeant Ali Khan and officer Isaac Herrera agreed to drive to the waste facility and abandon James in the middle of the night after James was dropped off at the facility, she walked along the road and was hit by a car, suffering, quote, catastrophic injuries. Providers at Enlo Medical Center in Chico were forced to remove 30 to 40 percent of her colon and around two feet of her small intestine. Today, we're going to be diving into a legal concept that plays a crucial role in discussions around government accountability, what is called the state created danger doctrine. If you enjoy my channel videos, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. So what exactly is the state created danger doctrine? We all know and we all have probably heard police do not legally have to protect an individual. We've all heard it. And that is true in most circumstances. The, the role of the police as the courts see it to protect the community as a whole and not one specific person. But that is where the state created danger doctrine comes into play in regards to an individual. And it falls under the 14th Amendment. So let's explain what it is. Again, what exactly is the state created danger doctrine? It's a legal concept that arises in certain situations where the state, through its own actions, or inactions creates a danger that would lead to harm to an individual. Let's break down the doctrine and understand why it's so important. The state created danger doctrine stems from the idea that if the government through its actions exposes an individual to a danger that they wouldn't have faced otherwise, it may be held liable for the resulting harm it causes. This doctrine is an extension of the constitutional principles that have been recognized in various legal cases. Certain elements must be present. First, there must be a direct and foreseeable harm caused by the state's actions or inactions. Second, there needs to be a relationship between the government and the individual that puts the individual in a vulnerable position. Let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say the state demolishes a building and it fails to secure the site properly, resulting in harm to an individual nearby. The state-created danger doctrine might come into play. Similarly, if a law enforcement agency places someone in a dangerous situation without proper protection, it could be a case for this doctrine as well. And that second part is what this video is going to fall under. It is important to note that the state-created danger doctrine aims to strike a balance while holding the government accountable for harm it causes. It also acknowledges the necessity of certain governmental functions that might involve inherent risks. In conclusion, the state-created danger doctrine is a legal principle designed to address situations where the government's actions expose individuals to harm. It underscores the importance of accountability while recognizing the complexities of balancing public functions with individual rights. Now this incident was first reported by news agencies last year in July of 2023. Let's give you a rundown, okay? Now this was Butte County, California. The Oroville Police Department was facing a lawsuit after an officer was accused of illegally abandoning an arrestee in the middle of nowhere by a local landfill. 
Hit by a car after being left at a dump by police. Northern California woman wins huge settlement. In my opinion, she should have went to jury trial. She probably would have got ten times that. Now, if she would have seen the money, who knows. But, uh, yeah, I think it was a lot more than what she got. A Chico woman arrested back in September 2022 by Oroville police who was then driven to a Butte County dump at midnight and left until she was struck by a passing car as she tried to walk home, has settled her lawsuit against the city for a $3 million payment. Dana Marie James, who is 54, sued the city of Orville in federal court last year following an incident which left her hospitalized with life-threatening injuries for 35 days as a result of a hit-and-run. Court records say the ordeal forced her to endure several painful surgeries. Now, under the 14th Amendment, state-created danger doctrine, a law enforcement officer can't put a person they encounter in a more dangerous position than the one they found them in. Her attorney is quoted as saying that he hopes the number reached in the settlement serves as a warning to all law enforcement agencies and officers that the practice of dumping individuals out in remote areas just because they're tired of dealing with them is one that needs to immediately end. How did they get to the point where this officer decided to dump this woman out in the boonies and just be done with her? Well, it started with a dip in a homeowner's pool. <laughs> Funny enough. The incident began during a heat wave when a Butte County Sheriff's deputy arrested her for allegedly trespassing by taking a swim in a homeowner's pool, the lawsuit claims. The deputy observed that Miss James was incoherent, had an altered mental status, and was possibly under the influence of a controlled substance. Now, James was taken to the jail in Oroville leaving her shoes behind. She was booked and later released at around 3 p.m. Now, when she was released, she was not provided shoes or a bus ticket to get her home. Nobody offered her a ride back home. And the distance between the city she was jailed in and released to her home city was about 23 miles from one another. Now, six hours after her release, James was arrested again, this time by Oroville Police Officer Robert Sasek spelled S-A-S-E-K, who found her at a Home Depot. She was incoherent and unable to care for herself, the suit says. Now, because the officer believed that Miss James was incapable of taking care of herself and additional calls for law enforcement assistance would continue if Miss James remained at Home Depot, the officer decided to arrest Miss James. Now, the officer took her to jail, but the intake nurse probably remembering her from earlier, would not allow her to be booked in because of her mental and possible medical condition. So the officer decided to take James to the Orville Hospital, where he had her wait in his vehicle while he went inside to seek medical clearance so that he could book her in the jail after he got the clearance. But James was never admitted to the hospital, the lawsuit says, adding that the officer cited and released her in the parking lot, despite her condition. Now, Officer Sasek knew that Miss James required urgent medical evaluation and treatment, and was unable to care for herself when he abandoned her at the hospital parking lot. Now, shortly after leaving Miss James in the parking lot, a security guard for the hospital called the police again on his personal cell phone and requested that the officer return immediately. The security guard informed the officer that Miss James had been walking around the exterior of the hospital trying to open locked doors, and the security guard further informed the officer that Miss James was out of control and had barricaded herself in a hospital bathroom. Now, the security guard was able to get Miss James eventually out of the bathroom and escorted her back to the parking lot of the hospital. Officer Sasek arrived back at the hospital where he was met by a sergeant and another officer before placing James back in his vehicle and then driving her to an area gas station. The three officers then discussed a plan of action. At this point, they're all sick of her, right? They don't know what to do with her. They, they know they're going to have to continue to deal with her because of her condition. 
The three officers were aware and had discussed that Miss James was possibly under the influence of a narcotic or alcohol and was unable to care for herself and urgently needed to be seen by a medical provider due to the possible use of controlled substances and her altered mental status, poor physical condition, and an extremely elevated heart rate. All three officers knew and discussed that Miss James had been rejected by the jail at booking because she had an urgent medical condition requiring evaluation and treatment and needed to be medically cleared prior to being accepted into custody at the jail. Now, Officer Herrera suggested that Officer Sasek take her out to a remote area on Neal Road at the waste facility, which is a dump, and abandon Miss James at the dump. Sasek then drove 15 and a half miles north to the Neal Road Recycling and Waste Facility as James asked, where are we going? Where are you taking me? And his reply was, don't worry about it and just shut up. Miss James then found herself abandoned at the county dump. They arrived at the dump and Sasek told her to get out and ignored her questions about where they were. The officer is accused of telling her, you will figure it out, it's not my problem, before hitting the gas pedal, spraying James with gravel as he drove away. It is believed he was wearing a body camera while transporting Miss James. However, Officer Sasek did not activate his body-worn camera while transporting Miss James and dropping her off at the dump. The suit also alleged that Sasek turned off the vehicle's GPS tracking capabilities so he could not be monitored while he discarded Miss James at the dump and that he also turned off his personal cell phone so they could not track his position from his cell phone. Also, Officer Sasek did not notify the radio dispatcher of his departure time and beginning mileage when transporting Miss James. The City of Oroville has failed to enact a policy that requires officers to complete this simple task prior to transporting arrestees. James now was left at the dump with no way to summon help, and she was all alone at midnight, out in the middle of nowhere. And it gets worse for her. Now imagine being out in the middle of nowhere. Dark, no street lights, no phone, no water, no shoes, no flashlight, and no idea where you are. That is the position that this officer decided to put her in. Officer Sasek just drove away discarding her on Neal Road outside of the dump like she was a piece of trash. Officer Sasek, Sergeant Khan, and Officer Herrera treated Miss James as though she was garbage. Their heartless decision to abandon her at the dump would warrant criminal charges if they had abandoned a dog or cat out in the same situation. You do it to an animal, you're going to get charged. You dump a person out in the middle of nowhere, you're f free and clear. Now picture this. Miss James tried to walk back towards town using the shoulder of the road. Remember, it's dark, no street lights, no flashlight. All right? She could probably barely see. She was struck on her right side by a passing vehicle that didn't see her and was sent flying down an embankment into several large boulders where she remained falling in and out of consciousness and severely injured for approximately 10 hours. The driver did not stop to help and James remained injured at the bottom of the basement until the next morning when she managed to crawl up and seek help from construction workers at the scene. She spent the next seven days in intensive care and had to stay for a total of five weeks. Based on the severe internal injuries that Miss James sustained, medical providers were forced to remove 30 to 40 percent of her colon and approximately two feet of her small intestine. Miss James had also been informed that due to the internal injuries and the removal of a portion of her small intestine and a portion of her colon, she will likely be required to wear a colostomy bag for the rest of her life. She also had to endure multiple surgeries, which included amputation of two toes, 
and continues to experience problems and pains after the amputation. Miss James has experienced and will continue to experience pain and suffering and mental and emotional distress for the rest of her life. Miss James has been diagnosed with PTSD as a result of Officer Sastek's misconduct. This is like a movie. They get tired of dealing with this woman and decide after a while to drive her out midnight, pitch black, out in the boonies by the by a dump and dump her like trash. They didn't want to deal with her anymore. So what do you do? Hospital doesn't want her. Jail won't take her. We're going to continue to have to deal with her our whole shift. Let's just get rid of her. Miss James is lucky they didn't put a bullet in her head when they were out there. They could have went out to 30 million or more. This is ridiculous. But they settled for $3 million. What do you think? Do you think they should have gone to jury trial? Do you think a sympathetic jury would have made her a billionaire? And if they would have, what are the chances that the city and the insurance would ever pay that amount? Well, they would probably just drag this on for the rest of her life in court. Comment what you think. As a final note, I appreciate and thank you for watching this video of the Junkyard News. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget, like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. We're going to continue to put in videos on our channel. Until next time, Junkyard News. Peace!